There wasn't a theme going in, but I think uh, as the songs unfolded themselves, there was uh, uh, a couple of characters emerged that seemed to be popping up in a lot of the songs, and it became sort of a uh, something of a road record and something of a... Uh, I don't know. When we look back on it, when it was done, it seemed kind of like a, a fugitive odyssey. And, uh, you know, it's not clear still whether, I don't know, some people think it's the same two characters in every song. Uh, you could look at it that way. Um, sometimes I look at it that way. Sometimes you could look at it completely differently, and maybe it's a bunch of characters. But there is a theme running through it, it seems. But well, that wasn't intentional when we set about writing the record. Uh, God, we've, uh, well, we're, I guess we're located in New York. Um, but uh, as time has, uh, has gone on, we've uh, spread out a bit to, uh, uh, to Philly and uh, Alex currently in North Carolina. Carbro, baby. Carbro, that's right. So, uh, but we're still a New York based band. We're a Northeast based band, I guess. We recorded this record in Hoboken, um, which was new and, uh, and cool. I, and I think a lot of that inspired a lot of the songs on the record, actually, because we recorded in a space that's on like the, the industrial rail yard fringes of Hoboken. Newman and, Leathers. Yeah, Newman Leathers, the Newman Leathers building, which has been around since, what, 1862? I don't know, but it looks like, the set, looks like one of the sets from one of the movies Saw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like so it's, it's so industrial it's, and it's old. It's both terrifying and, and inspiring. <laughs> yes, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> so we spent uh, a lot of nights over there over the course of, uh, I don't know, about a year and a half recording this record. And, and uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of the lyrics did come out of those, uh, those trips over there to that sort of desolate corner of, of those rail yards, yeah. I think I would start by answering that. Uh, start answering that by saying that I think that the songs were way more of a, an entirely collective effort, uh, whereas the first record, you know, they were we, the band was just coming together. I was a hired gun on the first record. Yeah, really. exactly. so, no, but Paul was the last one to that? join the band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Paul was the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Paul was the was the was the uh, the fifth one to join the band. Um, and so, you know, a lot of the songs existed pre... A lot of the songs on the first record existed prior to, to Paul's joining. So, um, so you know, a lot of those songs sprung up either as, you know, uh, compositions that were, you know, put together by one or two of us, two or three of us. Um, but this, this most recent record is really... Was, was, was five people putting together music and, uh, and uh, again, me just, you know, adding the lyrics sort of as, as, uh, as the music inspired them. So that was that was a different process and more of a band process, I think, and I think that was, I think, uh, most enjoyable to, to all of us who were involved in it. It took longer too. It took a lot longer. And yeah. I think we made a conscious cool. effort to add more textures and layers yes. to it, also. Yeah. That's when you say it took longer, is that a good well, thing? Well, it took no, no, it was, but yes, it was a good thing. No, <laughs> right. I'm saying it took longer. We took our time, and you know, it sort of evolved and it ruminated more yeah. than the other one was. Kind of, we went to, down to Richmond and recorded that. In, you know, in right, time. three days, two, yeah, two, yeah. two, three day sessions. You know, that's right. So yeah, th this happened over a lot of consecutive weeks, um, a lot of consecutive weeks. Whereas yeah, as Paul mentioned in, in Richmond, it was just we went down there for four day blasts, five day blasts. So uh, you know, we had more time to live with it. I, I, I think they evolve uh, absolutely from conception to album. I, ironically, what you mentioned though is the version of Breaker Breaker we played tonight is actually. Uh, Alternate. Version. Yeah, yeah, it is it's the like alternate the, version of it. Not yeah. usually the live version. Yeah, our live version is way more electric and uh, I don't know how would you describe it. Rocking. Yeah, yeah, rocking and dramatic. And uh, and this version we played tonight, I think um, uh, that, that that's that's one of the, the handful of songs in the album uh, that uh, this sort of fell out fell out of my acoustic guitar just in my apartment one day. And uh, the version we played tonight, I think, is truer to the original conception. Um, so. Uh, you know that serves that version serves as the hidden track on our album because it's it, it, it's you know not quite representative of the band live in a, in no. a live electric room but fun for this kind of format. and it closes out the album well too yeah mm -hmm. yeah so. there's theories behind that yes we won't go into those still investigating those yeah, yeah exactly uh, uh, two songs actually uh, Pike City proper was on um, and uh, God which other one people, I think. no 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 um, stolen tags. All right. Stolen tags. So, so two of our songs, Pike City proper and Stolen Tags, were uh, were in an Friends? FX. No, 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 no. In an FX series called Terriers, which was uh, uh, really highly acclaimed. Um, I don't know if it's going to get renewed because apparently the ratings didn't match its acclaim, but it was pretty great. Um, a great, uh, I guess, sort of a I don't know, a crime story and uh, set in Southern California. Um, it's been a, a great, uh, uh, I think, really pleasant surprise, um, you know, in, in a lot of spaces. Um, locally in New York, um, 
WFUV and WFMU uh, and WRXP 101.9. Um, uh, whether they're uh, you know, weekday shows or weekend specialty shows, they've been playing a lot of songs from their record. And then all the way out in Seattle, KEXP um, uh, gave us, I mean, played a tre as, uh, gave tremendous support to the record. Um, as a matter of fact, I, th I think we all got pretty flipped out when they were playing one or two songs off the record. And then uh, at some point along the way, we realized they'd played nine songs off the record, and the record was in heavy rotation. And then they. Uh, made one of our songs song of the day so it was it, it was it was a great affirmation because you know somewhere way out in Seattle someone who doesn't know us and has no vested interest in wishing us well uh, was embracing and promoting and getting behind the record so that was that's that's been a lot of fun oh yeah yeah and that that's a uh, that's a tribute to WFMU which is what 91.1 out of Jersey City uh, one Sunday afternoon uh, I jumped in my car and uh, started the car at three o'clock and or it just happened to be three o'clock or 301 whatever not that I remember this that vividly uh, but I do uh, I started the engine and uh, uh, there was our song the interstate blaring out of the uh, out of the stereo speakers and I got really disoriented in, in, the, in the moment that it happened I thought is my iPod hooked up <laughs> yeah, you know, am I listening CD to a player. rough mix that has been like a CD you know, in, you know, in, in the uh, in the CD changer for a while and I got really disoriented and I was like holy smokes uh, WFMU is playing our record is playing worm burner is playing uh, the interstate as I uh, you know turn over my ignition it was it was it was pretty awesome in all the disorientation of it uh, it ended up being really really cool on that same day Alec and I went to my dad's uh, appliance store on Main Street and turned on all the radios <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. All right. Well, uh, ironically enough, the title was, while, you know, I, I mentioned being sort of the guy who manages the words in the band and, you know, gets away to write the words. Ironically enough, uh, you know, that title, Terry came up with that title. And uh, just met... You know, you know, he was that, in a hotel room, a motel room or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I don't know where he came up with so, that idea, but... Right. No, so, so <laughs> obviously, Placed by the Gideons is, uh, I, I think, you know, if you're not familiar with it, in every hotel room, motel room in the United States, and I think maybe worldwide, there's an organization worldwide. called the Gideons, a Christian organization called the Gideons that places Bibles in hotel rooms. We're not a Christian stands. rock band, though. Let's right, yeah, that, no, no faith rock. No faith rock. Uh, no faith rock. But... Uh, so there's this organization that places Bibles in nightstands, and every Bible says Holy Bible placed by the Gideons. And I, you know, Terry joked that that would be an interesting album title, not even for our album title, but as, you know, as I thought it was a great idea and began to sort of reconcile that title against a lot of the lyrics that were falling into place for, uh, you know, this sort of, he used the term fugitive odyssey about... Uh, you know, uh, uh, a couple of people, uh, you know, uh, making their way across the country and staying in motels and hostels, and uh, it all just seemed to fall into place. So, uh, so hopefully that, uh, as a title, says something about, uh, uh, you know, about the content, at least the lyrical content or the narrative content of the record.